Workforce Solutions Secretary Bill McCamley, thank you so much for uh, taking a little extra time with us uh, this morning. As we're talking, it's Thursday morning. Um, we've just seen numbers from the federal government come out, 3.3 um, million new claims. That's about five and a half times the existing uh, record for new claims. As you mentioned in our on-air interview, that dwarfs um, even the Great Recession that we just, uh, it feels like recently here in New Mexico really, just got out of. We heard uh, the Fed chairman, uh, Jerome Powell, say that uh, the time to sort of measure getting back to work is after we beat the virus. I know that's your focus. I know you're also looking at what's coming out of Washington in terms of the bill that Congress is wrangling with, the House might vote on on Friday. Um, will it be a while before you know what the impact of that bill will be? It will be. So uh, this is Thursday morning. The bill just passed the Senate uh, early this morning. We got an update from the senators at, I think, 1130 our time. So that would be 130 in the morning in Washington. It obviously still has to go through the House, and we don't want to count our chickens uh, before hatching, as they say, in terms of what's in the bill. And so we're going to wait to see what comes out of the House. We are going to be in touch with our national organization, as well as the Department of Labor, to make sure we get guidance on the mechanics of how all of that works. And then we'll be able to move hopefully as fast as we can to get the provisions of the bill out to people. What are the two things in that bill that are reflective of our office? Number one, there is a provision in there to increase the amount of unemployment benefits to go out. I believe it's for a four month level by $600 a paycheck. Once again, we don't, these aren't hard numbers yet. We don't know that that's going to be what passed, but we think that's what's in the bill. Number two, there is a provision that would allow us to open up unemployment for self-employed people who have lost their jobs that are currently not eligible right now because the way unemployment generally works is employers pay a payroll tax and that number is what uh, replenishes the fund. Self-employed people don't do that. But with this exception that's going to be allowed by the feds, we think we should be able to offer those at some point in the near future to people who are contract workers. Think um, musicians who had gigs at bars or at the opera who are now, now long, no longer able to fulfill those. Think possibly contract workers at convention centers, uh, massage therapists at spas, veterinary technicians at racetracks who did a job by job. Uh, uh, contract. So those are the types of folks that we hope we're going to be able to get into our system as fast as possible. Okay. You mentioned um, on em or employers paying uh, a, a, a tax, a payroll tax for unemployment insurance. I know a lot of employers, as they've had to shut down, are wondering, okay, so I had to lay everyone off. What's going to happen to my rates? Uh, where does that stand right now? Right. So the equation that generally sets up every employer's payroll tax it's pretty complicated, but there's three general things, right? Number one, what's the health of the overall fund? So as the fund goes up, rates go down because we don't need to tax as high. Number two, what industry are you from? There are different coefficients for people in different industries or businesses in different industries. And number three, how many people have you laid off? As of yesterday, around one in the afternoon, we declared that we will not be on an emergency basis taking that third part of the equation. So how many people you've laid off uh, into the rate that will be generated for next year. So what we are doing is in effect what is called mutualizing the system so that everyone will pay rates that will be based on the health of the fund. And there's two reasons for doing that. Number one, we want to make sure that we're providing some relief to some of these businesses that have been hit really hard by this. And number two, and our more mechanical reason, is it will allow us to what we call uh, accelerate our adjudication process for people that are applying. So it will allow us to do that hopefully on a more automated level, at least for the near future, which will allow us to get benefits out to folks uh, as fast as we can, given the high amount of folks that we've had in a very short period of time. Uh, you're a former legislator, uh, and you've heard the calls for a special session. Um, you know that that's coming. Um, do you have any thoughts about when would be the best time to, to hold a special session and just kind of the mindset that um, some lawmakers should have going into this? Matt, so I'll, I'll tell you, our focus has just been on our own internal process. Uh, we've had, no one's ever seen the kind of volume we're getting in terms of the amount of people that are applying for online and the questions we're getting. And, and we're just trying to do the best we can right now to not only get that that service provided as much as we can to help the folks in the state, but also really keep 
abreast of what the federal bill is bringing and how we can incorporate that into our system. Uh, I know that there has been some discussions uh, with business leaders, community leaders, the governor's office, some legislators about what might be in a special session. But I'll be honest with you, I, I haven't really been a part of those discussions as we're really just trying to keep our systems going and, and really remind people that we're, we're trying to stay patient here. This is something that no one's ever really dealt with before and we're all figuring it out as we go, but we're doing it together. Number two, to be kind with one another, to really treat each other like we're the community and family members that we are here in New Mexico and remind people that we are part of a team. Everyone's got a role to play. We're playing team ball and we're going to get through this together. That, that's been really our focus so far. And if we can get through the next few weeks, I think you're going to see some more uh, discussion come up around what that is and what it might look like. But as of now, we're just we're trying to keep people safe. We're trying to keep this virus from spreading. We're trying to flatten the curve. And on our end, we're trying to give people the financial tools that they need to get through this process so they feel they can do that together. When the administration implemented these changes that we uh, talked about more in depth on air, the unemployment insurance fund was $465 million. Uh, Mm -hmm. You pointed out to me when we were discussing this that there's a a one-week waiting period, so we're not likely to see the real impact of people who've already applied those increased numbers. Um, But we will. Uh, What is the the health of that fund, I guess, And, and how will you sort of be passing that information along to people? Yeah. So every Friday, we're going to be releasing numbers that we've had for both initial claims for the last week, the total amount of people we have certifying, which is the total amount of people that are on unemployment, and the number for the fund. And so we're going to try to do that every Friday morning to make sure that our communication process is as open and honest as we can without overloading our staff who are out there, you know, try to do their day-to-day business without having to put new numbers together every hour or two. So that's what we're going to try to do. Um, we're, as you pointed out, we're probably not going to see the true uh, effect on the fund until probably next week because we had a bunch of people apply last week. This is their waiting week. And then so next week we'll see uh, a more of an effect on the fund. But the, the counter uh, situation there is that we do expect to be getting some help from the federal government to boost the amount of, of dollars in that fund to help pay for the extra things that the federal government is asking us to do. So we don't know what that is going to be yet, but those are the two things we're, we're kind of monitoring right now. Okay. And, and lastly, um, as you know, losing a job uh, or, or having your hours cut can be sort of a gut punch and people need a yep. second to sort of process that. Um, During this downtime, are are there resources available for people, whether that's counseling, whether that's retraining? Are are there things that you can recommend um, that are sort of best practices if you're going through a period of unemployment? Yeah, uh, you're you're absolutely right. You know, I, I was the chair of the labor committee in the legislature in the House of Representatives. And, you know, I've worked economic development. One of the reasons I wanted this job so much is it just makes me feel really, really good when I help people get employed. Um, you know, I've been unemployed and it's, it's hard. And, you know, the money situation is really hard about it, but a lot of times it's, Hey man, I'm, I'm getting up. I'm looking myself in the mirror when I'm brushing my teeth. What am I going to do with my day? I've been there and it's, it's tough. Um, but our job right now, is to make sure that we beat this virus as much as we can. We wanna keep people from dying. And we can all get through this together. There are mental health resources out there. Uh, there there's some state help for people that are experiencing uh, thoughts of loneliness or thoughts of depression. And I can get you that number so you can put it online. There's also the opportunity to really think about, you know, do I wanna retrain? Do I wanna to try to do some other things? 98% of the jobs created in the United States since the Great Recession require more than a high school degree. So if you've ever thought about, hey, I want to go into the healthcare industry and get a certification or an associate's degree and move into that profession. If I ever want to go into IT and look into boot camp scenarios where I can uh, get certifications in specific programming languages and get jobs coming out of there, those types of things are available. And we encourage you to look at our website, dws.state.nm.us. We've got our all of our apprenticeship opportunities on that website if you want to look there. And You can always turn to your local community colleges and really figure out what kind of uh, programs they offer to help you upskill yourself. That's really where we were at before this whole thing happened, was working with people to get their skills up so they could uh, get the jobs that are being created in the 21st century. And I would encourage people who have some time on their hands right now and and maybe haven't had time to think about what they want to do to really examine that. And when we get through this together, 
we're going to do everything we can here in the Lujan Grisham administration to make those resources open to you so you can uh, get those jobs and, and be in a great career for the 21st century and help our state and communities grow. Secretary, we appreciate you taking a little bit of extra time with us. We know you have a lot of work to do. Thanks, Matt. Have a great day. And hey, let's everybody keep our heads up, okay? All right. Sounds good. Thanks again.